So at this time in the middle of September of 2023, I just have to recommend that nobody use this product. Hello, my name is Joe Suarez. I am an e-learning developer, and this is part three in my series on Adobe Captivate. My original goal was just to take a look under the hood, but I'll be completely honest, my opinion of Captivate has changed in the last hour or so. I came across some things that can only be described as broken, but as promised, I want to talk about why it is such a radical departure from what we're used to with slide-based authoring tools. And to do that, I actually want to come over here and start with uh, PowerPoint. When we're authoring in any kind of slide-based tool, that PowerPoint is basically the, the derivative of. So we have some basic layouts that it recommends for us to use, templates, whatever you want to call it. And then we can move those around on the screen, insert additional items if I want more text boxes. Not interesting stuff whatsoever, but you get the idea. I could duplicate that 100 times if for some reason I needed to. This is all called WYSIWYG. What you see is what you get. I can click and drag and insert and do all that kind of stuff to my heart's content, right? So this is the frame of reference that we've been using to design courses for many, many years now. This is the interface for the all new Captivate. So far, it's not that different from what we'd expect in PowerPoint or a similar slide-based authoring tool. Now, before we go any further, I think it would help to use an analogy and I came up with what I think is a good one. I'll let you be the judge of that. But I thought of McDonald's. Now, hear me out. Let's say McDonald's about five years ago introduced pizza as a menu item, something that a few people took to. They liked it, but more or less, people continued to go to McDonald's for what they were used to, burgers and fries. Then let's imagine McDonald's announced that they were going to do radical changes to their restaurants. They were going to change the exterior, the interior. They were even going to change the menu items and they framed it in such a way that made everyone really excited for that change. So curtains go down over all the McDonald's buildings, everyone's waiting in anticipation, and then nothing. Months go by, the McDonald's are still closed, we can't see what's going on, but then out of nowhere, you see the new McDonald's is there, and it's got a fancy new sign, and it looks like it's gonna be great. Uh, but you pull up and you notice that things are radically different. And then the kicker is that the menu items now are all pizza based. Now, in anticipation that people would not be happy with this change, they have a burger and fries pizza option that you can get. If you still want burger and fries, you can have it now. It's just on a pizza. So soon after this change, people want their old McDonald's back, essentially. So end scene, end analogy. That is a story not really about McDonald's. That is a story about Adobe Captivate. So they made this big announcement that they were going to revamp their product and have a completely new uh, experience authoring courses. Many years prior to this, specifically back in, I believe it was Captivate 8, they introduced this concept of responsive design. So you could design courses specific to different screen sizes, desktop, tablet, and mobile specifically. And this is, in my analogy, like McDonald's serving pizza. Most people played around with it a little bit, but they didn't stick with it or their organization really wasn't interested in responsive design. So they continued to make their standard slide base fixed rectangle uh, courses that they've been used to. And all of that was true with Adobe Captivate until this radical departure they've made with this version 12. So let's take a look at what we're talking about here. Okay, back to the user interface. It looks like we're dealing with a typical slide-based authoring tool. Well, let's try to add something here to this blank slide. We have a few different options here to add things. I'm going to click here on text blocks and just click the first option here, paragraph. And okay, you can see I have a block of text. That's great, let's add another one here. Let's add a multi-column layout like that. So we have a few things here on the screen. Let's start to manipulate them. Okay, um, you can't. In fact, the only thing that clicking and dragging does is changes the order of what we can refer to as these blocks of content now. And every time we click somewhere, so if I click on the block itself, I get these different properties over here. So I can change how this multi-column block looks and behaves using these properties. If I want more columns, I can drag this. I it goes up to three. I don't know why it's a slider from two to three, but hey, there you go. And this is just the way Captivate is now. We lost that ability to have complete control over where exactly it's going to appear on the screen, which to be fair, that's how responsive design works. We don't 
get pixel perfect placement anymore when we're talking about switching from desktop to mobile to tablet, etc. We basically have to lose that train of thought and think of things as more fluid and dynamic when we're thinking of how our content is actually going to display for our end users. But I don't think the average Captivate user is ready for that change, nor do I think Captivate has pulled it off very well here. I know a lot of organizations that have put their employees through training to use Captivate. That old training, those old certifications that people may have, those are completely useless now if you're switching over to the new Captivate. Now, to be fair, some of the ways of doing things are still there like they used to be. Specifically, I'm thinking of the screen recording, screen capture tool that Captivate has just been great at for, for years. Now, as promised, I want to show you the ways that Captivate just does not work in its current form, and it's quite alarming. So let's go take a look at that. If I continue to add some content blocks, Go ahead and add a list here and, oh, I don't know, let's add a, an image with some text. Looks awful, but whatever. Yikes. Okay. So yeah, so now my nice slide here is actually a scrolling page. And if I go ahead and just add a default slide here, what I want to demonstrate to you when I go to preview this, that the course opens up with our first slide here that doesn't scroll. And it has a next button by default on the course player. So if I click that, now I'm on slide two. And if I'm someone who's used to taking e-learning courses in my organization for compliance training and whatever, I'm just going to, by habit, just continue to click this next button until I get to where I need to or until I'm prompted in some way that I need to interact with this slide. Nothing tells me except for this scroll bar on the side here that this scrolls. What I'm basically saying is we've conditioned our learners not to look for this scroll bar, especially if we open with a course that doesn't have a scroll bar. Adobe took a big swing here by creating this new version of Captivate, trying to combine two different ways of authoring courses and experiencing courses. And in my opinion, it just falls short and doesn't really have the best of either option. So I'll give Adobe credit. Some of these pre-built slide options look pretty good. Like this one here, nice and clean, nicely spaced, nicely sized, everything looking good here, except for maybe this blue bullet, but we can look past that for a minute. Then we also start to get into items like this where, okay, it's not too bad from a design perspective, looks okay. Where things really start to break down is when I start to add these interactive components. I have a button and it's a block. Uh, I have the ability to add more than one button. I can add three. Okay, that's something I guess. And everything starts to just kind of break down when I'm deciding, okay, well, where do I want it on the screen here? I've got to use this slider. How does that work? Um, okay, I guess that's towards the center. But then when I go to look at the tablet view, it's off centered and you know, that's fine for mobile view, but so maybe I slide all this. There we go. That's more in the middle. Oh, now it's over here on the left. What is happening? What, why am I manipulating this with the slider in the first place? Why can't I declare that I, for the tablet view, I want it this way, but for the desktop view, I want it another way. As far as I can tell, there's no way to have custom settings for each screen size, which is just a huge miss if you're going to go all in on responsive design with your tool. It, it gets worse. We have some built-in quizzing slide options. So here's multiple choice. Let's imagine that there probably will be some scenarios where this just doesn't go far enough. I need something custom. So to do that, I would come to the interactive components and I would add a radio group. We'll imagine that this is true or false. So whatever the right answer is, we're not here to have a philosophical debate over that. It's not till I click here that I see the different settings I can have and I have to expand it to increase the number of radio buttons. Unlike the multiple choice question, I don't have the option to say custom and add more. If I want eight, it doesn't let me add eight. As long as I'm not going above five choices, I can create a custom multiple choice question. What if I want multiple answer though? I want my learners to be able to select more than one response. This is where the new version of Captivate completely fails. Now, by the time you're watching this, they may have fixed it. But as I'm recording this, as you'll see, this is just doesn't work. So we have this option checkbox. And even on the icon here, it shows two items, right? Choose one or the other. I've created it. I have one option. Now up here, I could change the number of radio buttons that appeared. Here, 
when I click this, there are no settings to increase the number of choices. That's it. It doesn't exist. So how are you supposed to create a multiple, a custom multiple answer question? Short answer, you don't. And you may be thinking to yourself, let's force it to. We'll shrink it down. We'll duplicate it. We'll remove the label on the next one. We'll duplicate that. Okay, we got option two here. Got option three here. <laughs> They're not unhighlighting. Oh my God. Okay. Ignore that. So if I say preview here, what? Configure. Okay. So I need, what's the correct answer? Can I just click here to select the right answer? No, I've got to indicate it somewhere. Okay. So you have to have the entire slide selected. Then you have to say what the correct answer is by clicking there and then selecting. Adobe, I didn't realize how hard this was until just now. <laughs> you have to make me click over here, select what the correct answer is, and then say done, and then it disappears. Articulate Storyline has had this in place for 11 years now. Now back to this thing that's highlighted for no reason. Maybe I added a border. If it shows up in the preview, then yes, I added a border. Nope, I didn't. It's just there for some reason. Okay, so here we added three options. This would work as a question. Here, this is a block and this is a block. When I tried it earlier, this didn't actually work. Like I select this, this one and then it would disappear and then this one would go. Also earlier when I tried this, it wouldn't actually highlight. It wouldn't actually show the check mark there. It was so weird. Oh, I remember what it was. Let's, let's recreate that. What it was is I click this. I changed the type to be an image. Great. So I have three options. How do I get rid of this image? shape text image oh there we go okay sadly this will be the experience that everyone has for quite a while with the new captivate by the way what even is this i thought it was clock hands at first anyway what i learned that all this is is you can crop the image so we can zoom in on this and see that yes it is a woman silhouette and her shadow great all right so if i preview this again maybe we'll see what i experienced previously Say that. Oh God. Okay. So states crop doesn't work across all states or something. That's awful. But when I click this, look, I don't get the check mark anymore. It's broken guys. It's completely broken. It just doesn't work. And look at this. This is captivate version 12.1, meaning this is a significant update and they don't even have that. This doesn't work. So for that reason, I just can't recommend this as a tool. And I really just wanted to create a video series here that looked at all of this objectively and looked at the pros and cons of this tool. But this thing just isn't finished after all the long wait that we had. It's just not ready for prime time, if it ever will be. I just have a lot of doubts around the promises that they're making that features that are available in Adobe Captivate Classic are gonna make their way into this new version because it's just so radically different. Everything is responsive now. Things that weren't responsive before previously, how are you going to add those into a responsive tool? You can't even get uh, check boxes right. So for that reason, I just have to say, avoid this tool. Stay away from the new version of Adobe Captivate, at least for some time. Even if you're a Captivate shop and you got IT to approve Adobe, this is not something you want to be stuck with and um, maintaining courses in going forward. This is just, it's a bad user experience. It's a bad authoring experience. It's broken. It's limited. It, there's no reason to use this product other than it's cheap. So I feel really sorry for organizations that get stuck using it because all they see is the price tag and the name Captivate because this is a radical departure from previous versions, as I've said before, but in ways that until a couple hours ago until I started making this video, I just had no idea how bad it was. This is a different conclusion to the series than I thought I would have going into it, but yeah, that's it. That's Adobe Captivate in 2023. So thank you for watching this series. Uh, if you haven't already subscribed to this channel, because I hope to be talking about things other than Adobe Captivate going forward. So until then, I will see you in the next video.